Hey there, everybody. So today we wanted to talk just a little bit about um, using Mod, uh, Modbus in LabVIEW. So um, don't want to do too big of a deep dive into what Modbus necessarily is, but focus primarily on how to use this in LabVIEW. Um, so just kind of a very brief introduction. Um, for those of you who may not know what Modbus is, this is a very common industrial communication protocol that's used by a lot of different devices. Um, so uh, could be you know flow sensors, um, power inverters, you know all sorts of stuff uses Modbus. Um, and so this is a common protocol you could find. Um, the way that Modbus works um, is it stores data that can be either read or written to in certain locations known as addresses. Um, and there are different methods by which you can access this data. Um, and uh, Modbus refers to those as function codes. So there's a whole bunch of different function codes that are all assigned a number um, and they have different names. So, um, you know, reading discrete inputs would be function code two. Um, and different uh, types of this data, so you have, you know, coils, discrete inputs, holding registers, input registers. Um, depending on the function code, there's different levels of access to these items, so whether that be read access, write access, or both. Um, really don't wanna to do too big of a deep dive into this. Um, just know that um, per your device, um, you're gonna to need to read the manual to see what function codes that your device actually supports. Um, in addition to that, um, you, your manual will also include a list of addresses from which you can find specific data. So for example, if you had um, like a flow meter that use Modbus, right? Um, there, there would be likely some holding registers um, in which you can find the fl current flow data, um, and those would be at specific addresses. You would need to find the, the uh, address you would need to read to pull that data, and there could be separate addresses for things like the max flow value, the min flow value, the average flow value, you know, maybe even like the temperature of the fluid, um, status information about the flow meter, error information, you know, all sorts of stuff. And it's all going to be stored in different locations. And it's all different from device to, to device, so you will have to read the manual to figure out which function codes are supported and which addresses the data you care about is actually stored in. Um, but yeah, um, and also kind of just as a side note, um, this uh, ModView tool is a um, custom software application I wrote myself um, that is used for just general Modbus testing. Um, has lots of cool capabilities, uh, can connect to both serial and TCP Modbus devices, read and write registers. You know, it can pull registers and coils and whatnot automatically and log that to files. Um, has some other cool features like being able to simulate a Modbus slave. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, uh, really helpful in just kind of debugging um, Modbus code. Um, also has the ability to track the actual transmit and receive data. So here you can see the raw hex that's being sent and returned, um, breaks down, you know, function codes being sent and the raw data. Um, so, you know, very helpful for just testing Modbus code, trying to figure out what's going on and testing communications with devices. So if anyone's interested in this, happy to share it free of charge. Um, just reach out. I don't have this published anywhere public right now, but I can get you um, what you need to use this if you're interested. Um, so now first, getting into how to actually program this in LabVIEW. So um, in LabVIEW, out of the box, there's not necessarily a tool you can use to communicate using Modbus. Um, but there are a whole bunch of additional packages that we can install um, from VIPM. So if we open VIPM, um, the simplest thing you can do is just go to the search bar and type in Modbus. And this is going to return all of the packages related to Modbus. And there are quite a few. Um, and they all are just a little different. Um, so, you know, you might want to try some and find the one you like that suits your needs best. Um, personally, I prefer the NI Modbus library. This is created by National Instruments, um, and it does have both a slave and a master API. So I like this personally because it works for both, whereas some of the other toolkits are 
only for acting as like a Modbus client. Um, but yeah, um, it's up to you really. I'm gonna do this demo in this video um, using the NI Modbus library. So now that we've got that installed, um, if we go to the data communication section of the functions palette, you can see the Modbus library here. And then in Modbus, Modbus library, we can see there's both a master API and a slave API. So in most cases, if you're creating um, some LabVIEW code running on like a computer, the computer is usually going to be a Modbus master and the devices that you're talking to will be Modbus slaves. Um, that is not always the case. Um, I've had systems act as a Modbus slave where other devices can reach out to it. Um, just in most cases where a computer is involved, um, it's usually the master and the devices you're talking to are the slave. Um, now I have set up stuff where I've had like a compact Rio before that we've created to be a Modbus slave and different like PLCs and devices have connected to that. Um, so it, it is case by case, but in most cases you're going to be a master when you're programming this to run on a computer. So for this example, we're going to use the master API. So let's go here. Um, and these are all the Modbus master functions. So first we're going to need to create a Modbus instance. So let's drop this guy down here. Um, this is polymorphic, so you can see I can either create a TCP or a serial master depending on whether we're using Modbus TCP or Modbus RTU. Um, and then same thing, I can also select the slave functions from here. So for our example, we're going to use a TCP master. Um, so top left corner, we have this address terminal. Um, so this is where we're going to specify the address to the Modbus slave that we're connecting to. Um, so for this demo, we're just going to connect to localhost. Um, now you also have this option for which port to connect to. By default, port 502 is Modbus TCP, but if for some reason you needed to connect to some device that was different, um, you could change that port. But by default, it's going to go to 502, so we don't need to touch that. Um, you also have a connection timeout. Um, we're fine with the default, so we're just going to leave that there. Now we're also going to drop this uh, shutdown function onto our block diagram for closing the connection out. Um, and now we're ready to do the actual Modbus communication here in the middle. Um, so you can look here at the master API palette and there are separate functions for reading and writing various Modbus data. So you can see we can you know read discrete inputs, input registers, coils, we can write coils, either single or multiple. We can read holding registers, write holding registers. So this is where you're gonna have to figure out for your specific device, what do you need to do, right? Is the data you're trying to read stored in a holding register? Um, you know, you'll, you'll have to figure this out and it is completely different from device to device. Um, so first, let's just read some coils. Um, so coils in Modbus are going to be just a true or false, so a one or a zero. Um, so these are often used to store like status information or also to like turn something on or off. So let's connect this up. Um, awesome. So uh, out here, this is going to return just an array of Boolean values, so just trues and falses depending on what we read. Um, on the input side of this read coils function, we're going to be prompted for a starting address. So this is what you're going to find in your documentation. It's going to say, hey, these coils are stored at these addresses. And so we're going to start at an, a known address, and then we're going to read a different number of inputs. So, you know, if we wanted to read from coil 7 to coil 10, we would set our starting address at seven and we would say we want to read three inputs. Um, for this example, let's start at zero and we're just going to read three coils. Um, so this is gonna connect to a Modbus slave at localhost and then read um, coil zero, coil one, coil two from that device and then close the connection. So that, that's all ready to go. Um, Let's drag this down just a little bit so you can see the data come back. Um, now, kind of going back to that mod view tool, um, I do have the ability from here to launch a simulated TCP slave. 
um, which is very helpful for testing and debugging. Um, so I've now launched that slave. Um, so it will respond to requests to read and write various Modbus data, whether that be coils or inputs or holding registers. Um, and any data you do write to it um, will persist across multi uh, future calls. Uh, so by default, everything is false and all your, your numeric values are all zeros. But if I go write, let's say like holding register 4,000, I write a value of 500 to it, and then I go read that value again later, it will still say 500 until I change it to something else. So it can be really helpful for testing and for simulating. Um, so this is running now, and I'm going to read. So you can see I got back three coils, and these are all false. Um, so let's go modify those. So from mod view, we can also do uh, connect simultaneously and um, kind of change some of the values of those. So I'm going to open up a connection and I want to write some coils to it. So let's set this first coil to true, set this one to false, starting at zero. So now we're going to set zero to true, one to false, and two to true. So let's write that. Um, and we actually can also read that in mod view so I can see true, false, true. Um, so yeah, let's use our lab view code now and read that back and you can see that it's also matching that. Um, so our, we are successfully reading data through that Modbus TCP slave just like you would from some other device. Um, now I just wanted to highlight one other thing. Um, all of the other functions, so whether you're reading discrete inputs, input registers, holding registers, they're all pretty much the same. Um, so I just wanted to highlight one thing that can be a little confusing at first when working with Modbus devices. Um, and that is, um, so I've just dropped down this uh, read holding registers function. Um, this is going to return an array of U16 values. So these are 16-bit unsigned integers. Um, now, Modbus does not have a way to support floating point numbers. So if you have any sort of number with a decimal place, it's not supported in Modbus. Now the way that device manufacturers get around this is they will take a floating point number and break it apart and store it across multiple registers. So for example, a single precision floating point number is 32 bits. If we break that in half and store 16 bits in one holding register and 16 bits in another holding register, we can instead just read both of those holding registers and merge the bits back together to get back to our floating point number. So I just wanted to highlight how you can actually do that in LabVIEW. So um, let's go to, we're gonna read starting at holding register zero and we're gonna read two registers. So let's say we have a 32-bit float stored across those two registers. We want to read it and then merge it back together to get back to a floating point number. Um, it's actually relatively simple. So if we just drop a typecast function and connect that array to it, um, now we just need to specify the data type to typecast to. Um, so let's just drop a numeric constant down and then we need to make sure that we change the representation on this to a single precision because double precision is a 64-bit. Um, so now we have a um, converted float. You know, we can read this. It returned to zero just because the default numbers are zero, but this will work for converting numbers. And there are a few instances where the data you're reading will actually be reversed. So by def so when you're converting these numbers, uh, this array of uh, integers to a float, um, one of the uh, registers is going to be the high bits and one is going to be the low bits. And by default, it's in you know order of you know in this instance we're reading two two holding registers. Um, address zero is going to be first and address one is going to be second. Sometimes we want one to be first and zero to be second. Um, and this is easy to do by just using the, whoops, not that, the reverse 1D array function. 
So this will just take a 1D array of any type and chain and just reverse it entirely. So the order of the elements in the array. Um, so now we can flip that. And so devices will also in their documentation usually specify the actual word order of um, their data. So um, if it was inverted, that's a simple way to um, just flip the order without you know too much hassle. Um, and that's really all there is to Modbus. So you know all these other functions are similar. They all do essentially the same thing. Um, they work the same way. But um, so Modbus really powerful, very commonly used, um, and relatively simple to use in LabVIEW. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this demo. I just wanted to highlight before I left one more time. If anyone is interested in this tool, um, this is free. Happy to share it. I just don't have it published anywhere right now publicly accessible, but I can get this to you. So if anyone is interested, just reach out. You know, really cool tool for testing Modbus communications. So, um, but yeah, other than that, um, that's it for today. Thank you.